Okay, now you're at the stage where you can build this graph, um, starting at the very beginning node and then branching out. And it turns out the algorithm that you use to build the graph is the same algorithm that you can use to solve the whole problem. What we need is a graph traversal algorithm. And if we choose the right one, then we will actually reach the solution in our search for more nodes as, as we traverse the graph. So the right choice here is breadth first search. And the reason is, so if we go back and review um, what breadth first search does, remember it's adding things to a queue. So starting at an initial node, it adds all of its neighbors to the queue. Um, and then it starts taking things out of the queue and adding their neighbors. What that means is it's going to process the things that are closest to it first, and then the things that are closer to them. And so it ends up, so this is just a rendering of a graph in 2D, but you see it goes from the inside to the out. And so in this graph, it would do the same thing. It would start at the initial node and it would start, it would visit its neighbors that were one move away first. Then it would visit the neighbors that were two moves away and three moves away and four moves away and so, so on and so forth. And it would slowly kind of propagate through this graph until eventually um, it will have explored all the way to the solution over here. Um, and there we are. So, that, so that's what we have to do. So we actually can just start with a single node and branch out using depth first search. Um, and we will, we, it turns out we will get to the solution in the fewest number of, of steps because every edge length here is one. So, so we, will end up we will end up finding the shortest path from the start to the last node. So because every edge length is a single move, with, with unit cost, Dijkstra's algorithm actually reduces to breadth first search here. And that's great because breadth first search only uses, uses a queue, um, which has operations that are constant time, adding to the end and removing from the front. So this will be a lot easier and more efficient to implement than using a priority queue. Now in artificial intelligence, we'll talk about doing things that are fancier that find the solution faster that really do need a priority queue. So there's some steps you can do beyond Dijkstra's. But for now, this problem is small enough that we can actually build the whole graph um, and find it that way. Okay. So I want you to do that. So implement breadth first search. Um, in doing so, I also want you to implement a version of breadth first search where we're able to trace back at the end. So I want you to remember um, the nodes that came before this node. So if I start at the beginning here, um, you know, this, this is at the vertex of a cube, actually, as we saw um, the starting state here. And so it can reach, um, it has degree three. There are three places it can go. Um, and so I want to make sure that I can remember that those three things that it can visit, this one, this one, and this one, um, have a back pointer to that node. And the node of neighbors have a back pointer to them, so that eventually, once we find the goal node, we can trace back all the way to the beginning. And that will actually be our solution. Then, then we can look and say, well, what do we trace back? Uh, we reverse it and see, oh, those are the steps that you had to do to, to get to the solution. Okay, so, that, so that's what you're gonna do. And, and that'll be it. And you'll see, um, I'll, I'll show in the next page after you finish it. Um, I mean, you'll be printing out the solution to, to the hard problem, um, this one, in the console. Um, I'll add an animated GIF that, that shows the solution that, that, sh that you'll find. Um, and you'll notice that it has only 24 moves, which is what somebody in class came up with. And, and that's great. All right. So go ahead and give that a shot and thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed this problem.